Can we really end homelessness? Do the homeless want to be helped? Should I give the homeless guy with a cardboard sign a couple of bucks or some loose change? Before we get started, welcome Earthlings to Redditamin, a channel dedicated to popular and trending topics as well as tricks and tips to manage your daily life and relationships. Click like and subscribe and I promise you won't be abducted by aliens while you sleep. On subreddit Unpopular Opinion, OP says we have homelessness because we don't care as a society, and we refuse to admit it. Giving food or spare change does little to nothing towards helping the homeless. As a society, we choose not to provide the resources to help the less fortunate. We might give sums to charity, but charities don't address systemic change. Many are barely scraping to get by as it is. Instead of the news broadcasting the rise in homelessness, let's admit that the haves don't want to spend resources and that the status quo is acceptable. Let's stop pointing fingers because we have the living space and resources to give a leg up. I believe there are some people who completely lack the ability to fend for themselves. They need perpetual help. And for those who are able, we shouldn't be helping them indefinitely. But let's at least give people a chance. But as long as me and mine are taken care of, who cares, right? The responses to OP's opinions are. You can't help people who don't want to be helped. Likewise, you can't help people if you can't provide them with the right kind of help either. You can't help a mentally ill homeless person by putting them in a hotel room and feeding them, they need a doctor or a caretaker who is willing and paid to even begin the therapy process. Do you think all those food kitchens in Los Angeles are ignoring the overall problem of Skid Row? No, the people who are hungry got fed, the people who are poor got their share of donations, the people who ask to be housed in warehouses studio styled housing are given it. The rest who reside in the streets are either the ones who can't be helped, or, gasp, want to live like that, as in much prefer to be homeless, to your surprise. It's not all the narcotics, it is being crazy. The narcotics are present because they make the crazy manageable, but very often the crazy came first. I worked in a forced state mental hospital in 1982-83 before they closed. Those folks were sedate but crazy. By 1987 they were all on the street and I recognized a few of them. They weren't any saner, they were just off their meds and free on the street. If you don't like homeless, lock them up again, they live just about as happy a life. You should walk into a homeless camp and offer help. Offer to help them get into a drug alcohol program, in to see a social worker, help them fill out applications to get a job. Report back on their response. I was homeless because I got laid off the same month my lease expired, and you need to be employed to find a place. It isn't always their fault. Yes, but you said, I was, homeless. It's possible for people to become homeless because of things out of their control, but our society does have programs in place for those of us that truly feel homelessness is an abhorrent condition for ourselves. But many, 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 homeless people don't wish to be bound by the rules of those programs. For instance, one program in Orlando said you must be in by 11 p.m. The exception is if you work, then you can come in later if it's because of your job. Many people, when informed of this, would say, forget it, you can't tell me when to come and go. I've done a number of cleanups and outreach initiatives in the homeless community, and the overwhelming majority of them do not want help or to change their lifestyle. Obviously it isn't all, but it really shook my preconceived notions of the homeless being victims of society to see such blatant refusal and even mockery at some level of the help being offered. The amount of money that goes into soup kitchens, shelters, programs, etc. When a homeless encampment grows in a neighborhood, not only does it increase crime, but it lowers property value and just makes living in that neighborhood shittier overall for the people actually contributing to society basically turning neighborhoods into complete shitholes. And, they are an invisible tax for the empathetic as empathetic and generally decent people that don't know any better, are likely to give them money or feed them, etc.
I would say 90% of these have suffered physical, emotional, or sexual, almost always sexual abuse, which subsequently brought them into substance abuse. It's an intense amount of emotional trauma and also physical brain trauma due to the substance abuse. To rehabilitate these people would cost an absorbent amount of money with a less than satisfactory return. A better solution to homelessness is actually preventing it. That probably sounds a bit too obvious, but preventing it in the sense of providing resources and education for people in abusive situations, in an attempt to not only keep them from substance abuse, but breaking the cycle of trauma. Many of these resources already exist, but not everyone knows where to find them in their location, and not every area offers it. Also, way too many blind eyes turn to child abuse. It's just way more complicated than just giving money to the homeless. Not that you shouldn't. But realistically even if you put them all in homes with essentials, it still wouldn't solve the problem of their trauma, substance abuse, and inability to sustain themselves. How do we end homelessness? According to the National Alliance to End Homelessness, a community-wide coordinated approach to delivering services, housing, and programs is needed to end homelessness. We need to quickly identify, assess, refer and connect people in crisis to housing and assistance, no matter where they show up to ask for help. According to the comments from people who have worked with the homeless, they don't tend to ask for help. The NAEH also states the solution is simple. Rapid rehousing can end homelessness. Well, technically it does, temporarily anyway. They say that by connecting people with a home, they are in a better position to address other challenges that may have led to their homelessness, such as obtaining employment or addressing substance abuse issues. But will they? Per the NAEH website, they also suggest increasing income as a solution to ending homelessness. What about the ones who don't want to work? Programs like the NAEH and the National Health Care for the Homeless Council are a great place to start and look for resources in your local community to help the homeless. However, this problem is complex and has no easy solutions. We need programs and resources for those that do want help, of course. If we can even reduce the number of homeless persons in our communities, we'd be making progress. But even with these wonderful programs available, the situation is getting worse. So, do they want to be helped? Some do and let's go out of our way as a community to assist them. Sadly, many do not. What about handing spare change to the disheveled man or woman standing in the median with a cardboard sign? Sometimes they wave at you or walk along the median or sidewalk, hoping a kind-hearted driver will hand them some money. I mean, who wouldn't help the homeless veteran, with the sign that says God bless you, anything helps, right? You've got a few extra bucks probably. What about when they have children or dogs with them? What about if it's Christmas time and you're feeling especially generous? According to the police and homeless advocacy groups, giving money to panhandlers perpetuates the problem. Money they receive often goes to supporting drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. Instead of providing them with funds, you could hand them a number for a treatment program. It's likely to be thrown to the ground, but it's a way to show compassion for their plight. Give to charities that help the homeless instead. I like to hand out water bottles. Sergeant Robert Dewey from the Fresno Police Department's Homeless Task Force says helping the homeless can be a struggle because many don't want the structure and discipline that comes with getting help. A self-proclaimed panhandling expert says he makes around $3,000 a month and has been doing it for five years. He says he panhandles because he likes the freedom of not living by any rules. So if you're getting hundreds a day for doing nothing on the side of the street and you're getting free food. And you know at some point some nice citizen or church group is going to come by and give you clothing or bedding and maybe some more food, then why would you work? It's up to you, but I say keep your cash. Tell us if you have ever been homeless or know someone who has. Please share this video with others who are interested in helping homeless people. Drop a comment, click like and subscribe to be notified when I post a new video.
。Stay awesome. ホームレスになったことがあるか、ホームレスになったことがあるかどうかを教えてください。このビデオをホームレスの人々の支援に興味がある人と共有してください。コメントをドロップし、いいねをクリックしてサブスクライブすると、新しいビデオを投稿した時に通知が届きます。引き続きご利用ください。